Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the 2019 Chasson Premium 530. So as we start, we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle. The first point you get to is your LPG, which is your liquid petroleum gas, your gas locker. So normally it's fitted with a six kilogram propane, but this vehicle has last customer has fitted a gas low refillable tank so it's an 11 kilogram bottle which can go into here should you be thinking of changing it and then you turn on and off so plus and minus obviously it's shown green there which means there's gas in the bottle and to fill up you just go to your local LPG center take the cover off if the bean is fitting Connect the front by turning the nozzle on the gun, pull the trigger back and then press the button on the display where you see the literage and price until it stops and that's at full. And these will tend to take about between 15 and 20 pound to fill. And it's, you get a lot more use out of it and should you ever be going on the continent, they're very good to find LPG instead of finding the bottle. You've got your owner light, you've got your fridge vents there. This key here will open the door and all the lockers, but this door is central locking, so you press the button button to open the habitation door. You've got your WC, which is your chemical cassette loo, so if you pinch and open, make sure the blades go to the lift and slide out. Put some wheels on there so you can drag it around to your disposal point which is normally beside the toilet and shower block on your site and to empty you'd simply unscrew the cap here press the button tip out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap put some water in give it a rinse tip out again and then if you're filling with chemical you can either use a cap full of the liquid or you, if you're using a new form which is the tablets you put a pint of water in and drop a tablet into the cassette like so. And then when it clicks back in, it's in position. Just underneath here, it, so behind the back wheel, this is your wastewater outlet. So any water that's went down the plug hole goes into here, or should I say any liquid. So if you're draining off anything, you just pull this forward and it'll open. Normally you drive over a special motorhome service grid, but this is a, another point where you'd want open in the winter so no water freezes in the underslung waste tank you've got your external barbecue point so this is your gas point so any gas appliance you want to power this powers it off the main bottle so you get a spigot which connects into here you need some rubber gas hosing and some jubilee clips to connect it all together and then you can connect it to your gas heater or your kadak and coming around the back you've got your High level brake light and reverse camera at the top, your bike rack, so loosen the levers off, pull down, your bike's wheels go on here and then these go through the spokes and tie the wheels down to the rail and then these go through the crossbar. So that's for the second bike and that's for the first and then I would recommend putting some sort of bike lock around the bikes for added security. Your locks on your back, what you need to do is you need to put the dot on the frame to the dot on the lock face, do a quarter of a turn and they'll stay in. A quarter of a turn pops the lock face out and then a full turn to open the door. In here you've got, it's heated by the diesel heater. You've got your inflation kit, your tire gel and your torn eye these just pull down and form shelves and they're just on strong magnets there so if you wanted to put anything bigger in there you can push them up and put a table and some deck chairs in there and then coming round to the passenger side of the vehicle you've got your mains connectivity point so you get your hookup lead lift it lift the flap and slide the hookup lead on there. And then when unhooking, you would use this small blue clip to push down and always hook the vehicle up first, then walk to your power source and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle. 
In this locker, this locker is known as your Techni Box locker. So this has got your fresh water filler in. So to fill with fresh water, you go and buy yourself a hose pipe and some connectors because it's just mainly a brass tap. So you'll need the screw on and the hose lock. Hose into there until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see from the main control panel. And then this little dump valve here, this is your travel drain. So say you've got a full tank of water in here and you're ready to start traveling. Not only does a full tank of water take up some payload, it also increases the vehicle on diesel. What you can do is you can lift it up, put the pump on and open the tap and it'll take it from a full tank to a, ma a minimum left in the tank of 20 litres, which is good if you want to stop and use the toilet and have a cup of tea when you're on that long journey. To get the remaining 20 litres out, or if you want to drain it fully in the winter, you have to go underneath the vehicle. And just behind the pipe here, so just underneath here, there is a 15 mil plumber's push fit connection, you would just Pull that off and it'll drain all the water or the remaining 20 litres out of the tank. And then coming to this side, you do have your charger, which charges the leisure and habitation battery when hooked up. You've got your 12 volt fuses, so these are just standard blade fuses, so it carries some spares and you can replenish them should a fuse blow. And then you do have your trips. So if the vehicle trips out with the kettle or a hairdryer, you can try here before you try your main site. And then these two fuses on their own are for your diesel heating. So if your diesel heating light is a solid green light, it means it's good to go and it's working. If it goes to a flashing green light, it's indicating that there is a fault, i.e. you've run out of a diesel and it's less than a quarter of a tank full or the heater has got an airlock and what you need to do is you need to turn the heater off lift the covers off lift this one amp and 20 amp fuse out push it back in which resets the diesel heater and then you can try again and if the light goes to a solid green and starts working then it's reset the heater if not then there is, there is a more substantial problem with the heater when heating your water on gas, this cover needs to come off. So you push down, put your finger in the middle and peel the cover off. Best place to keep that is just in the habitation door. So when heating the water on gas, the cover must come off like so. Otherwise the fumes get pushed back into the vehicle and that's when you'll get your red light on your little switch, which is on the face of the front lounge. If the if the cover was off and you got that little light, it means you've run out of gas as well or it's not receiving gas. So you may have to prime this system via the hob to get the heater working. But should it be on electric or you're traveling, you can of course have that cover on. You've got your cold water fed shower. So it just pushes in there, make sure the pump's on, you can hose the dogs off or the kids if they've been on the beach. And then coming to the door, you've got your easy fill diesel filler. So you just push in, there's no cap. And then below, you've got your ad blue. So you will get a mileage countdown of ad blue. It normally gives you a thousand miles. And it's about a 19 litre tank of ad blue. You can either buy it on the pump or you can buy it in the drums. When the light comes on, if you just top it up as soon as possible and don't let the mileage run down because once it runs out, the engine will not start. And if it gets so low down, it'll go into limp mode and it'll stop the vehicle going over 50 mile an hour to protect the engine. Your engine battery for the engine is underneath the passenger seat, or should I say the driver's seat, and your leisure battery is underneath the passenger seat. And to spin the seat, to use this half bar. If it gets stuck there, you just pull, pull the seat forward. and then turn the seat round into the rear of the motorhome. 
To turn your passenger airbag off, you'd use the key and use here, should you be fitting a child seat in the car, in the front seat there. And then if we just have a quick look underneath the bonnet, So you've got all your liquids, so you've got your screen wash, your brake fluid, your engine oil and your power steering fluid. Your dipstick's just down here. And then you've got your weight plate. So this is the weight plate that you go off now. So don't go off the Ford weight plate that's in the door of the passenger. It's now a motorhome, it isn't a transit chassis cab anymore. So you've got your VIN number, it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight, which means anyone on a standard driving license passing after 1997 can drive this. And you've got five and a half ton gross vehicle weight. So that means you can tow an extra two ton behind the motorhome through a tow bar, should you wish, but it can't exceed five and a half ton, which is the motorhome and the trailer. You've got your HO, KO number, which is your build number in the bottom corner. So should you ever need parts of your quote, that number, we'll be able to get the right parts for you via Chasson. Then you've got your earth, which is just on the engine loop here. And your positive under here for giving or receiving a jump start. You've got your fuses for the main engine. And you do have your coolant, which is here as well. So now inside the vehicle, so above the fridge, you've got your main 12 volt control panel. So first of all, this little green light indicates that we are hooked up on mains 240 volt, as we've got the hookup lead in. And then this switch here turns the vehicle on and off. So if you're hooked up, you'll have mains 230 volt. If you're not, you will just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. Next to it, you've got the light switch, the master switch for the lights, which are all individually switched around the vehicle. You've got your pump here. So the picture of the taps, your pump. So should you use taps, toilet or shower, you must make sure the pump's on to pressurize the water. And then next to it, you do have your owner light, which is the light above the habitation door on the outside of the vehicle. Down here, these buttons correspond with these symbols on the side. So first of all, you've got your the top one, which is the picture of the truck, which is your Ford engine battery reading, which is in the green there, fully charged. Then next one down, you've got the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading, again, fully charged. And then you've got your water, so this is fresh water, which is half a tank. And when that goes to red, it means it needs refilling with fresh water. And when it goes down here, red, it means your waste water is full. If you did want to dim this panel for the people sleeping up in this bed, you would just press and hold and you can dim or brighten the panel, depending if you can't see it or if it is too bright for on an evening. Next week, you've got your Abasto diesel heating. So to start the diesel heater off, you've got to make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main tank. Start it at full blast. Give it a couple of minutes and then you can adjust it to the temperature that you want. Don't be alarmed if the lights start flashing. This is because the, the 12 volt for the Wabas door is wired through the lighting circuit. But what a lot of people recommend is if it does start flickering, it's because it's taking such a high voltage of power from the ledger battery. You may want to just start your engine when starting this before you knock your engine off when you arrive on site. But make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel in, in for this to work, otherwise it won't work. To operate your Fetford fridge freezer, on the square button here, you'd press and hold to turn on and off. And then you've got your display panel. So A stands for automatic energy selection. So the brain of the fridge will pick the best source it has available and we'll put it onto this. So at the moment, we've of course got the gas open and we are hooked up but it knows not to waste gas, so it's went the hookup plug. So it's using 240 volt from the hookup. If I was to start the engine, it would go over the battery setting, which is to just keep the temperature of the fridge the same, so it's from the engine alternator, and it isn't designed to cool it down from being off. It's got to have been on and be cooled prior to it going on the battery, which will 
basically turns into a large cool box and keeps your shopper nice and fresh until you arrive on site. If you did want to take it off automatically you just press this square button here and obviously that's on the mains electric on its own because the A has disappeared. It's on the battery, it's code 6 failed because the engine isn't running so it's not receiving the 12 volt feed or it's on gas on its own. You've got your temperature here so you may want to turn, it's 5 bars is the maximum, you may want to just put on 3 or 4 because a lot of people say 5 bars can be too strong. But with the gas on automatic if you've been driving and you're going while camping and you turn the engine off the gas won't light for 20 minutes because it's a safety feature if you've pulled into a filling station. Obviously you'll not find 12 volts, you'll not find 240 volts but you'll find gas if you've left your gas open. It's designed to not light for 20 minutes as a safety feature. So what you will have to do is you'll have to manually put on the gas like I have done there and then switch it back on the automatic after 20 minutes. Once you are finished with your fridge freezer for the season, it's a little blue toggle here, if you just pull that out in the middle, it stops the door from shutting fully on itself. Once you've cleaned it out, if you just pull that out, and it'll allow air circulation in and out of the fridge. Above the fridge, you have your solar panel. So it's a dual charging solar panel, so it's charging both a Ford engine battery, and your leisure battery and you can view the levels of battery on here but you simply leave the solar panel to do its own thing as it's only as good as the round thing in the sky better in this obviously better in the summer in the winter it'll be not as good but it'll still send some voltage into the batteries on those sunnier days below you have your gas tap for your fridge so should you want to ever isolate the gas supply at the fridge you can do here but it's better to turn the bottle off should you have any problems with gas there's gas tops located all around the vehicle these are for when the technician habitation checks the vehicle now in the kitchen area so you've got three gas rings which are lit there so once you've had them on, allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down. But you do have your splashback covers here which you can put there so it will stop the window surround being splashed when you're cooking. This is just to show that your hot water system's working as the water's lovely and warm there and your pump's working. got storage above and this is your TV booster so you just use the black wheel there to boost and minimize the signal should it be too strong this is a fixed TV aerial so there's no movement in the TV aerial you do it all through the booster should you be struggling to get a signal you can boost that signal so you get a better strength Got your cutlery drawer, storage drawers, another two gas taps which I've already explained about. You've got your oven there and above you've got your grill. along with a light for your oven and grill there. Storage. And here you've got a three pin plug, which you may want to just turn around so it's on its side, because if you've got the plugs with the big thick ends, sometimes it can stop your cutlery drawer from opening. You've got your electric button for your table which I'll show you in a second and you've got your electric switch for your drop down bed there which I'll come on to when I do the beds and the lounge. In the back of the vehicle your bathroom light switch this is probably the 
one question we get asked the most, where's the switch? And it's just this little rocker switch here. Slides the bathroom up. Got a toiletry cabinet and this mirror covers the window as well. So to open your window, you just push it out. Push it all the way out to bring it in. Got a blackout blind pinch and a fly screen pinch to depart. To operate your toilet, you've got to ensure the pump's on and there's enough water in the fresh water tank. Press your blue button here, which will flush your toilet. Like it is there. Always flush the toilet before use. And then open the blade, which is slide to the right. Use the toilet. And then flush after use and slide to the left which isolates it and allows you to get the cassette out from the outside. Should it be full you'll get a light here to indicate that it is full and requires to be emptied, changed and topped up with chemical. You've got your wardrobe here so there's your ladder, your silver screens for outside and your carpets. Slide along for your wardrobe, just two reels, and then clip in, just stops your clothes from moving when traveling, and you've got some handy shelves here. Coming this side, you've got your large shower. So you've got your duck board, which bears weight better. So if you've got more kits when you're traveling on that longer, trips away, you can put them in here as long as the light. Got a reel for your towels, but also works great if you've been caught out in the rain walking or walking the dog, you can put your coats in here and allow them to drip dry. Got a handy ventilation hatch, so just ensure all your skylights and windows are closed before travel. And then when winter rising, if you remove your shower head from your hose and allow your hose to lie in your shower tray with the mixer tap open just to stop any water from potentially freezing in the coil pipe. And then last of all, you've got your concertina door for your bathroom which is just velcroed in there for when you're traveling to stop it banging around. So to make the bottom lounge into a double bed as this is a four berth, You'd fold the table out with the extension which pulls out as well. Position the table into the space and then use the button. Pop the table down which forms the bed base. Like so. And then you get your infill cushions. And You put your infill cushions in to form the double bed below. Above, you've got the drop down electric bed, which works off the other switch, which you can bring all the way down if it's just, if you're just using it as a two berth. But if you've got the additional guests, you can have it as like a double bunk, which is a double here and a double there. You will have to remove the backrests if you're bringing it all the way down to lie on top of the sofas. There's a ladder in the garage that goes on here and then you've got you can put the ladder underneath the mattress should you wish but take your pillows off leave your bedding on and just make sure that nothing gets between the contact here and the bottom of the bed because if the duvet gets caught in there the lights won't work because it's a contact switch for the lights that are on the bottom of the bed. To heat your water, so you've got two options of heating your water. You've got the top which is gas and you've got the bottom which is 230 volt. You can have them on both together should you be in desperate need to heat the water. But normally you would just use, if you were on site, you would use the electric. And if you're a wild camping, you'd use the gas. So at the top, in the middle is off on both. 
you've got 50 degrees on the gas off in the middle and then 70 degrees so you'd use 50 for showering 70 for doing your dishes and then on the electric side which is the bottom switch you've got one kilowatt of electric off in the middle and two kilowatts of electric just depending on what current and amperage they give you on your hookup is depending on what kilowatt you use on the electric side otherwise you could trip the vehicle behind the controls for the boiler is where the boiler lives so this is a 10 litre Truma boiler so in the winter it's very important you drain this down as if not and the water did freeze in it it would break the boiler and potentially Hello. freeze the water there which would bust and split the boiler which is very expensive to Hello. repair or replace and it isn't covered no, under any warranty no, so to drain down you'd lift this cover here very tight as it's a snug fit lift that out there and there's a yellow toggle when it's lying down like it is now it's holding water which is 10 litres when you stand it up it drains the 10 litres of hot water directly out underneath the chassis you'd leave this stood up on end during the time you've got the vehicle winterized open all the mixer taps open the fresh and waste outside to eliminate any water as it's just plastic pipes and tanks on this vehicle on all motorhomes and caravans and then when you are ready to use it you shut all the taps shut the fresh and waste outside shut the boiler shut all the mixer taps come in obviously fill up with fresh water first via a hose pipe come in put the power on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water when you go to the hot the water you'll feel like the water is not coming through and it'll start coughing and spitting at you and then what you would do is you would allow that to do the coughing and spitting for a little bit and then once it starts coming through you've pressurized one tap and you do the more because what, what it's doing is when it's coughing and spitting it's filling from the main tank into here with 10 litres filled this up until it comes through on the hot side of your mixer taps so now in the cab which is based on a mark 8 ford transit to the left of the driver you have your handbrake which is a folding handbrake so you might think it's off it's not obviously you can see the handbrake light there you'd pull it up push the button in and drop it the light goes off and then you'll hear it ratchet back up which is a back on you've got your remis cab blinds on the side windows which blacks the passenger and driver's windows out and then you've got the same on the windscreen So you do have to just fiddle around with them until the magnetic strips connect like they have there. On the door you've got your unlock and lock which locks the cab on a evening. So it locks the both cab and because this is a premium it's got certain locking on the habitation door as well. You've got your electric windows your mirror adjustments which are just the two big mirrors which is the main mirrors the blind spot are manually adjust by just pushing the corners of the mirror side light and main beam front and rear fogs and your headlight adjustment you've got your wipers all your radio controls here it goes through your screen here so, you, so it'll tell you your Traveling times, your distance traveled, you've got a digital speed or you've got a range, you've got average speed and so on all through here. You can turn your limiter on or your cruise control set, cancel resume. So if you've got to put your foot on the brake, you can cancel it without putting your foot on the brake or you can resume it by clicking there and it'll go at the last speed that's set. Indicators, six speed manual gearbox. If lift the collar in reverse, you'll get the grid. The red's obviously the back bumper. Take it out of gear, the grid will go away, but you've still got your rear view. It is a little bit impaired by the bike rack, but that's just how 
bike racks go on the 530s as it's a higher point for the bike rack to be on. You've got all your 12 volt fan speed, temperature, recirculation button, air conditioning and where you want the air to go so your distribution. And then coming on the radio, so it's FM AM, it's got USB connectivity and you can connect your phone. So once you've found your FM channel, you can press 1 to 9 to save your favourite tracks. You've got an auxiliary here, so it can be either Bluetooth audio, a line in, which if you press here, you've got Bluetooth, you've got a USB in here, you've got a 3.5 milli jack. And you have got a 12 volt source with a little cutout if you're going to use a sat nav or a dash cam or anything, you can wire it into here on both sides. And to connect your phone, you've got the phone, menu, OK, and find Hello. Ford Bluetooth on your device, press pair. Right. And then press okay. allow what is to connect your contacts.